Welcome to LSC. It's sports time. I'm your host, Bob Hemp. Today I have with me Vernon Lee, a former Hampton High football player. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Been well, looking I've been forward to it. to get you in here since last year. Now, you grew up in Hampton, played ball and wrestled. Where did you first start playing ball? Everything started for me at, over at Armstrong uh, many years ago. I had an opportunity with some of the guys I ended up playing with at, at Hampton High. We actually all started out at Armstrong. Okay. Guys like Keith Paul and Sherwood Jones and, and Kevin Knight and others. But yeah, well, Armstrong What was the name of your started. team? We're the Armstrong Vikings. The Vikings, okay. Yeah, we used to have some battles against uh, Mallory and Northampton and some of those other You other set up, you had little rivalries back then too. We did. Uh, and a lot of the guys that we ended up playing against in high school were at Mallory, the Northamptons, and uh, the Fox Hills, and some of these other places right. that, you know, we'd have our battles at Guys in the Hope Park. <laughs> that uh, they had some interesting, interesting times. Those are some really good Saturdays. But now, I want to go back when you were a young kid, and probably even before you started playing ball, but you'd go to Darling Stadium, and you hear the click, click, click of the, the, the spikes and everything. But I mean, you wanted to play on Hampton High when you were just a little kid. Absolutely, I can remember that really like it was yesterday, going to Darling Stadium those Friday nights. When everyone talks about Friday Night Lights, it really was embedded at an early age for me, right. and especially being in the Hampton zone, living off of Shell Road, looking at guys like Stan Jones and Woodrow Wilson and some of these other greats, and those Friday Night Lights and the battles that they had, and thinking about the Hampton Bethel rivalry and all those opportunities that every Friday night, having an opportunity to go out to Darling Stadium and seeing what those guys were doing, I always wanted to wear that crab or helmet. That was something I was already thinking about. <laughs> you wanted about that since thing. At least second grade, absolutely. Yeah, how about that? Because I had told people, I said, you can't believe little kids running around want to play for him tonight. I said, it's just, that's something they just want to do. It's ingrained in them. And I, that's one of the reasons that they're successful. Of course, the coaches have a lot to do with it and the, the athletes they get coming through there. But then you, after you grew up a little boy, and then you went to Lindsay. Yep. And, uh, you played a little ball over there for the Ketans? That's right. So we're at Lindsay, but at the time, the middle school and junior high programs, they had stopped just right. before we had transitioned there. So I was still playing with the juniors, which was Ketans. So Armstrong Vikings didn't have sort of a juniors version. So Ketans was, uh, was the team that I played for okay. then when I was at Lindsay. And some of the same uh, uh, athletes on yeah, there? Same, same yeah, some of the same guys that, you know. Because you're the all guys from just, the same area. All from the same neighborhood, but the line along Shell Road, probably cut between Phoebus, Kickatan, and Hampton. So a lot of us were playing together at Ketans, but then we started to split, even though we we're at different middle oh, schools and junior okay. high schools. So, and, and then you stayed, you was over there for a couple years, and then you went to Hampton as a ninth grader, played JVs, and your coach was? Yep, so my first coach in ninth grade was uh, Coach Frank Johnson, right. uh, who was a legend in terms of, of coaching at that time and helping to shape young minds and men in terms right. of athletics. So it was interesting that a lot of the guys that were at Lindsay were in the ninth grade, but literally we would have to go over to Hampton High, you know, for practice. Right. And even, you know, some of the fun times with pep rallies, you know, we had an opportunity to get out of school a little early. <laughs> oh, that, that <laughs> was a good deal. To pep rallies over, <laughs> over Hampton. So that was a real fun experience. Right. And then your second year in JVs. Yep, so second year. And so now it's different, obviously, because the ninth grade is at the high school. Cool. So at that particular time, ninth grade was still in. So now you go to the high. high school, you're 10th grade at the high school. Exactly. And so uh, Coach Brower, which is interesting because he was my head coach right. my 10th grade year on JV, but probably most people now think about him and recognize him as a basketball coach. Everybody, I mean, if you talk Walter Brower, you think basketball, you don't think football, but we have some old films of when you guys played, and it shows him on the sidelines. That, that, so, was, yeah. <laughs> so, that was coach. Yeah. And, and if I remember right, Frank Johnson helped Walter uh, in basketball some. That's right. And so it's interesting how all of the coaches were, you know, sort of multi-sport. Right. right? And, and again, in terms of shaping young minds and young men, both athletically and, you know, academically uh, as well. Okay, now as 11th and 12th grader, you get to do things that uh, nobody gets to do. You go to 11th grade, and uh, your quarterback is? Yeah, so 11th grade was Michael Bullock. We had the opportunity, and just to kind of set a little bit of the stage, my 10th grade year, we lost the state championship to T.C. Williams. Right. And so at that time, in terms of Hampton lore, Hampton Crabble football lore, we had never lost the state championship. And it was one of those things that if you get past out of the Eastern region, state championship is all. Yeah, you just like, give it to us. <laughs> yeah, this is it. I mean, this is what we do. We won state championships once right. we got there. And so the fact that my 10th grade year, which was, uh, I think that was 1984, to have lost to TC, we're at UVA in Charlottesville. I mean, it was a heartbreak. It was a, right. a, a real heartbreak. 
But one of the things that we felt good about felt good about was the next year we had a core group of the players that were coming back. Okay. So our eleventh grade year was Michael Bullock was coming in as a quarterback, who was a guy who was undersized, but you know you can't measure a guy's heart and some of the things that if we got tight, you know, in a couple of games with uh, you know some battles with Warwick and uh, Kickatan. Right. You know, Michael Bullock just stepped up and, and made some things happen. Well, he was a great, great athlete, and he's one that c could change a team. A little, a game, a little bit like Ronald Curry. I mean, before Ronald Curry, there was Michael Bullock. Mm -hmm. Well, who was your, your biggest rivalry back then? See, for us, it was Bethel. Oh, and, Bethel. I mean, it was <laughs> without a doubt. I mean, I know the Phoebus thing now, you know, things have evolved. Well, and Kickatan for a while, too. Yeah, so. Kickatan handed it to us uh, twice when I was in high school. <laughs> I was, Dwight Holler, who, you know, we're still good friends today. He's every now and then, uh, he reminds us, you know, what they did to us my senior year for our homecoming. So well, yeah, now so he went down good. and played for the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, yeah. he was, went down, he was uh, at North Carolina and down at the ACC doing some wonderful things and had yeah. a chance to go down so to the Dolphins So he kind of well. gives it to you every now and then. Oh, just like oh no, it's <laughs> right, but yeah, so. <laughs> And, and you know, Bobby. Bragging rights. Yeah, I mean, every year, especially, and I know we'll talk about the camp here briefly, but that still, to this day, we're sitting around <laughs> talking about games and reliving specific plays that happened back in the late 80s, um, just like it was yesterday. Right. Talk a little bit about that first championship. Yeah. And, at edge of 11th grade with Mike Bullock. Yeah, and, and for me, again, growing up, thinking about playing for Hampton High and the, the lore and all those things and the level of excellence that was established in, in terms of a program and a competition locally obviously right. was was important. Um, being that close a year before, being you know, experiencing that pain and hurt and the things that happened, that to win that state championship to have gone undefeated, to uh, you know, almost like a storybook type in and to play right. TC Williams again the very next year is a, a level of feeling and, and a level of accomplishment this unbelievable. And what was like a work. payback? I mean, you got absolutely. a chance to, to redeem yourself. Absolutely. It was the same team. Absolutely. I mean, to come back, you know, back to back and give it right back to him the next right. year. Uh, but it's undescribable, undescribable to win a state championship because the state of Virginia, knowing how difficult it is, knowing the level of excellence and the competition that takes right. place, to be able to have achieved that was a tremendous thing. I mean, I carry that with me today. And, and you know, it, for those you know, young kids that don't have opportunity, you know, winning at whatever level, I mean, whether it's winning at right. Hampton City, I mean, that's Just any championship. Any but championship. But the state of Virginia, this competition was absolute. Yeah. I still have my championship ring. I still have my state jackets. <laughs> my wife, you know, she laughs, but, man, you know, it's a lot of pride there. Well, it sure is. And then the next year, your new quarterback, Drock Kroom, and we've had Drock in and, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, just did a great job, and win a second one. But you lose a couple games. Absolutely. So that was a tough one because we actually lost back-to-back -back games. We had lost to uh, our senior year, Lafayette and Kickatan. Right. The Rock steps in. You know, he was being groomed along the way. And I don't want to say it was arrogance because we had went undefeated the year before, but people in the Peninsula District, teams don't lay down for you. I mean, you have to still bring the weekend. Win. I mean, they're not yeah. giving you – I mean, yeah, we kind of felt like, oh, we're Hampton High and you know, we already <laughs> got a touchdown we walk on the field. But – Lafayette and the teams that they had, I mean, every week was, was a battle. So Durack stepped in. Uh, it was a tough week after those losses. And I, again, I remember like yesterday, we had to play Warwick and uh, Ray Savage and, and some of those guys, uh, Big Derek Steele and, and Mass. I, I, it was a battle. And we and to Mike Husted, and we're still friends today, Mike Husted won that game for us because we won 3-0. And from That's that right. point on, we went – we pretty much when, shut everybody else out the rest of the season. And, and if we're in the state championship, how do you, how does, uh, do you get the, the athletes from this area? I mean, where do they come from? <laughs> you, know, I, you know, like uh, Elton Brown says, you know, I think it's in the water. I'm going to bottle the water, you know. But it just this, yeah. this area. There, there's something about, um, I think, something about the fabric of the area that gets passed on. And, 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 and I've... I've lived in a number of communities. I've lived in New Jersey, I've lived in DC, I've lived in California, Ohio. I've had the opportunity to travel globally. But there's something about the community and the mindset also this is a part of the fabric as well. There's a certain expectation expectation that sets. And it actually starts with the parents, starts with those in the community right. that if you're gonna step on that football field, you gotta do it in a certain way. And so there's something about that being passed on is really a part of the fabric of this community right. that 
it's hard to replicate in a lot of places. Well, see, you talk a little bit about the mystique of Hampton, but you know, we had Dwight Vick came in here, and he says a lot of times when we walked on the field, we won the game, and we hadn't even kicked off yet. But he said just the mystique of Hampton, and we get in a big old huddle before you know break to do the the Calix Sundays to go to your different areas. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this evidently is in grind, grain with when you guys were young. Exactly. And for us, and again, I can remember like yesterday, I mean, it's strange I've been, in fact, my 25-year reunion <laughs> is, is coming up uh, this year. But I remember the day when Coach Mike Smith handed me, uh, and Coach Mann handed me my Hampton Crabber helmet. And literally, I slept with it. I mean, I'm on camera admitting well, this, yeah, but the reality is I went home and actually slept with my helmet because this was something that, I had been waiting for for so long. So when you have sort of that mindset and that expectation that, look, there's a level of excellence that has to be maintained. You, and all the old school boys will come back. Like, you can't let us down, you're embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, don't mess this thing up. We're handing this <laughs> very They're special thing to you. They're handing you a tradition here. Exactly. You gotta keep it going. But now you always played wide receiver. That was always your position? I was, I was a wide receiver. I will, I have to admit this, and some of my buddies uh, are probably gonna laugh, I was a third string quarterback for one week, my <laughs> senior year. For one week? For one week, we were playing Monacan. Um, so the Rock was our starting quarterback, uh, obviously. Rick Hunter at the time, who was a couple years behind me, was our backup. And so someone had gotten hurt, so we needed, we needed someone to run the wishbone the week we were playing Monacan. So I'm happy <laughs> to say at Darling Stadium when we practiced, I was the third string quarterback uh, <laughs> that week. <laughs> Well, you, you did, not many people know that, right? Right. Not a, so, yeah, I had <laughs> to go But you never got in any game. No, that was it. Yeah, yeah, it was all wide receiver. All wide receiver. Uh, and then you graduate and you go to Hampton University, but you don't play ball. You're going to concentrate on academics. I'm sorry, Howard University. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the real HU. I know it's hard sometimes. Yeah. When I, all these Hampton guys are talking yeah. about the real HU. <laughs> yeah, but Howard University, yes. where you went. Talk a little bit about that, because now you're going to a – University, you're, you, you're going to, okay, I got to get my studies, your academics. So talk a little bit about the mindset. Was you able to use some of your, your stuff like time management stuff that you learned from being in sports? Did that help absolutely, you in academics? Absolutely. Um, and that was a very difficult decision for me to give up football. I had an opportunity to walk on at Howard, uh, but it was, it was difficult. That was a hard to, to have a passion for the game to be out there in the fall at those games and not actually be on the field for the first time in all these years was very difficult. Right. But I knew at that point I really wanted to focus academically. I was happy to have been accepted uh, to Howard. And I really wanted to focus academically and have the opportunity to try and earn a scholarship, which I ended up doing uh, mm -hmm. and getting an Air Force ROTC scholarship. Well, but see, you got a lot of passion and love for the sport. So I, it was, had to be difficult for you to take Very that difficult. Up. But now, you, but you're in the ROTC, you got the, the program. So now when you graduate, where are you gonna go? <laughs> Going in the Air Force, right. And, and so being from this area, I had the influence of Langley Air Force Base. I always wanted to fly jets. That was also one of my dreams. Okay. I ended up getting glasses and you gotta have, you know, perfect uh, you vision. Perfect and, perfect and vision. Thing. Yeah. But along the way, my ability to excel within the Air Force ROTC program, because I ended up being a com commandant of cadets and all of those things, but it still went back to my discipline and the things that I learned on the football field and in sports in general uh, around goal setting, around setting goals and objectives and, and making sure that you fall through with those, not just meeting those, but really exceeding those. And that mm -hmm. all translated in a way, and I got to be honest, again, being from the 757 and having achieved some of those other things that for a young man uh, transitioning to, uh, to a university like that, where you've got people from all over the world attending, right. it can be intimidating. But at the end of the day, I knew what I had done on the football field in terms of competition. But you had a lot of confidence in yourself. Absolutely. You? And that carried with me all the way through. Okay. Now, did you do a lot of travel? Because you were in, what, six years? I was in the Air Force. I uh, went on active duty for, uh, for six years. I had the opportunity uh, to live in some of the places I mentioned before. And uh, my last two years on active duty, I was in Los Angeles. That was probably the most interesting one, being in the Hollywood area. But yet, being an officer in the Air Force, building these satellite systems oh, okay. uh, that's going to deliver you know, all this video voice and, and data to, to the warfighter in the field. Well, what did you get your degree in? Business management, undergrad, and got my master's degree in international affairs. Okay. All right. Then, after you leave the uh, the Air Force, you go with uh, 
Fortune 500 company. Again, fortunate timing. Uh, they were looking for junior military officers because of the, a lot of the area of responsibility we have, both in managing people, budgets, and things like that. So I was recruited to PricewaterhouseCoopers, this global strategic consulting firm. And that's, again, where... Was this in California? Uh, at, back in D.C. So oh, I actually moved dear. back okay. to, to Washington, D.C., back to the East Coast to be close to the family. Uh, but that's where, again, some of the best minds, business minds, solving right. problems for Fortune 500 companies could be intimidating for anyone. Uh, and to be able to step in there, again, having this confidence of, well, no matter what you guys do, I'm gonna bring the same level of excellence also. Right. But that all went back to the things I was able to achieve uh, coming from this area. All right, now let's talk a little bit about uh, your company now, because you have your own company now. Mm -hmm. And yes. What's the name of it? So Brightwood Management Partners, we do venture capital, which means we have uh, different investors that are looking to invest in emerging companies, right. particularly in technology, software, mobile, and entertainment digital media. And you're out of? Washington, D.C. Okay, D.C. Yep. area, okay. Uh, then you, during this time, you get a call from Carl Francis. This guy. And Carl says, hey, Vernon, guess what I want to do? <laughs> <laughs> and I was in California then. I was still active in the Air Force. And, you know, we keep in touch and, you right. know, hey, what's going on? How the family? And, and Even again, though he was from Bethel. <laughs> yeah. And so even to this day, all right, there's some footage, Bob, and I know you guys have it somewhere. Our senior Hampton-Bethel game, we had a little trash talking going on <laughs> on a couple of plays. Um, you and about, Carl? Oh, yeah, Carl and I, yeah. There, there, there's a couple of plays where it, He's following me, I'm following him back and forth <laughs> on a couple of plays. So it was an interesting, yeah, he was a Bethel guy, was a Hampton guy, but around our junior, senior year, we really became the, friends, even the, though we were- Developed a yeah. good relationship and a friendship. But, we, but, but on that Saturday, it was a whole different ball game. Yeah, it yeah. Was, we were bringing it. It's like my dad used to say, you know, you're my son, but when we play cards, I don't know you. Totally <laughs> so different. you're gonna win, right? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, well, they would talk about when you got the phone call when you were out in California. Yeah, so at that time, Carl was with uh, the NFL Players Association. Uh, and again, we're just casual, hey, I have this idea, you know. And we will always talk, uh, Bob, even when we were younger, about guys that had, had excelled on the football field that really, in some cases, didn't have the opportunity to move forward uh, collegiately for, you know, whatever number right. of reasons. But also, regular conversation, hey, I heard Robert Banks was home. You know, he was playing with yeah, Cleveland oh, yeah. then. Or, uh, oh, Al Toon, yeah, I just heard he was in the mall. Like, so we would have those conversations. Right. So when Carl called, he said, I have this idea about doing a football camp and bringing back some of the guys that are in the league, you know, what do you think? And, and one of the reasons, in addition to him sort of bouncing this idea off of me, when I was at Howard, I uh, started another company here in the area doing event promotions and, and marketing. Right. And so we, we were doing different parties and small concerts and things like that. So I had some sort of logistical planning, organizational skills. Okay, and you had well. some people too that you could probably contact. Exactly. That would help, okay. So yeah, so he called, I was in Los Angeles at the time and I was like, this is great. I said, but there's one person I, I really want to call and bounce off of uh, was my dad, who's you know been a coach forever. And, right. and I just wanted to kind of get a litmus test from him and he jumped all over and said, absolutely, this, this will work. And so we kind of correlated between Carl's dad, my dad saying, well, our dad also says, this is a great idea, let's make it happen. Okay. So that's when the phone call started. you doing all that from California. I was doing all that from California. What we did was reach out to some other guys who were still here locally in terms of uh, organization. We reached out to the city of Hampton. And I have to give, there, there's a lot of people to thank for those early years, but Mayor Easton at the time was really, really tremendous in helping us get Darling Stadium because, you know, we didn't have any funds. We're have, begging Yeah, we gotta to go, we got to do this somewhere. Yeah. Exactly. So we reached out to some coaches, Coach Kaz, like, hey, no problem. You know, I'll get the equipment. So everything started rolling and started really getting excited. All right. Well, tell me, because we're going to kind of wrap this up, but mm -hmm. tell me about the camp. Yep, so. Because it's coming up in a couple of weeks. Yeah, we're excited. This is our, our 16th year, which is 16 amazing. 16th year, that's awesome. 16 years. Uh, we've had a tremendous amount of opportunity in terms of a lot of the players that have come back over the year. Uh, over the years, it's going to be another reunion. Uh, but at the end of the day, our mission is, is very clear that for the 500 or so kids that come out during that weekend, we're hoping to be able to deliver a message. Now, the football camp is, we're tricking them. That, oh, yeah, you can learn some football skills, and they are. And Coach Tom is going to be there, and, and you know a lot of the guys that are both active and, and retired now. Right. 
but the message around life skills and character building is really the message. So we're gonna have a good time around the football skills aspect. We're gonna feed them, but that couple of hours when we have that chat session is really about planting a certain seed. And hopefully these guys uh, and gals that participate as well are gonna take a message away from that. So we're really, really excited about our 16th year, which is, which is amazing. And the community's been a great support. Why did, why did the players come back home? I mean, it's because of the 757, the, the the love, the home. That's it, exactly, and that's what we sold. Do you have any problem getting these guys to come in? No, and 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 actually, and that's what we sold them. Was like, look, you coming home? At some point, you're gonna come home. You're gonna see mom, dad. Some, yeah. You know, why not make it this weekend and give back to the community? And so we've always sold them on that to the okay. point that it's not even a, a sale. It's hey, what are the dates? Carl, Vernon, what are the dates? I, I want to get it on the calendar. Right. I'm going to be there. And the passion, and really, Carl and I bust our butt along with a lot of other people. It's not right, just us I to understand. make this thing happen. But once the camp actually happens, it's, everything is set up, everybody's in place, let, and then we get a chance to really observe. You can sit back and, and watch it happen. And watch it happen. And it's a tremendous, tremendous feeling uh, to see the players take the ownership of it. I mean, the Ty Kellys and Elton Browns and Marcus Hagans and obviously Coach Tomlin and Kwame Lasseter and guys, I mean, t we, Terry Kirby in the early years and Chris Slade and more recently to see Tyrod Taylor, who when he was eight years old <laughs> at the camp. He would come guy, to your camp. I mean, this guy was eight, yeah, eight years old. I mean, Tyrod was maybe even seven, you know, eight was, he was still running around, you know, his dad, I was hey, let him kind of get out there. But to see what they've been able to achieve, uh, not just football, but uh, academically and as professionals right. as well is, 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 is wonderful. I appreciate you coming in. Thanks for having me. I want to thank you for tuning in to LSC and Sports Time. I want to thank my special guest, Vernon Lee. I'm your host, Bob Hintz. Until next time.